ready to keep Fan Fest going? Some of you were chanting their names, you were cheering as they walked in, so I don't think they need introductions, but I'm gonna give them some anyway. Yeah. This is two generations of amazing, we're talking to two generations of Mets outfielders. First, give it up, Brandon oh. Nimmo. Yeah. And this guy who had a couple big moments here, you know, over the One years. <laughs> Mookie Wilson, let's hear it for him. Hey, all right. All right. <laughs> How cool is that, by the way, getting the mook like during your playing days? That's pretty. I love it. You love it. I right? love it. I love it. One more time, since he loves it so much. Let's hear it one more time. <laughs> love it. Well, guys, baseball it's, <laughs> baseball has changed a lot since your days, Mookie, to yours, yes. not Brandon. So that's what we wanted to talk to these guys about this afternoon is kind of how the sports changed, how the game around it has changed and everything. So let's start right back at the very beginning for both of you, the drafts. Now, Mookie, you were drafted twice. Yes. Mets, Mets drafted you in 77, the second time around. Yes. I'm assuming you didn't hear about it on Twitter or MLB Network. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, How nah. did you find <laughs> out that you were drafted? Uh, I was in, uh, we were in Omaha in the College World Series. We were playing uh, Arizona State uh, in the final game. Um, and, um, you know, when I got home, you know, that got a phone call and said, you know, you was drafted by the Mets which I did not know who the Mets were at the time. Is that true? <laughs> no, seriously, I, I'm from South Carolina. We don't, we don't deal with New York. <laughs> you don't do New York down no, South we don't Carolina. do New York. No, no, but at the time. But um, that's when I first heard about it. So, you know, I didn't know what to be excited or sad until I got here. It was bad, man. Yeah. Mets, Mets were bad then, boy. They uh -oh. were bad. They were bad. Things turned around. Real quick. And I would like Didn't to why? think I had a lot to do with that, you know, but. I, I think you did, too. Yeah. What did it feel like? Because obviously, I mean, <laughs> you're drafted by a place. You don't know where they are, what the team is. They weren't good at the time. Were you still happy? Were you a little scared? What were the emotions? I was scared. I was scared. Um, I grew up in a town, population 500. That's counting the three dogs and the other two cats <laughs> on the side. Um, and they come to New York, and we, I mean, you're looking at 50, 60,000 people in the seats, man. I was scared to death. I'm not going to lie to you. It was scary. Well, it worked out for you. You learned how to make it work. So Yeah, nice, nice but job. the people. The people made it really, real easy for me. Um, I don't know what it was. Um, it might have been the name or it might have been whatever. I, I don't know, but the people really, you know, took me in, you know, and made me a New Yorker. And I, I tell you what, that made me feel really good. It was a lot easier to play once that happens. Brandon, a uh, similar story for you coming from a small town to New York. But we'll get to that in a second because I want to ask you about your draft day experience. 2011, right? First round pick. Yep. Very different, I'm assuming, than Mookie's experience. How did, yeah. how did you find out? Yeah, I uh, I was not playing in a college world series. <laughs> I was uh, we had we, we kept it pretty small. I just had my family in the house and uh, one one good friend. We came over and just wanted to see how it was going to pan out. Um, There's a lot of questions about the kid from Wyoming, and so we figured we could get drafted or not at all. You know, it could could be. So we ended up just gathering around the TV and. Uh, First few picks went by, and then number 13 came around, and we were watching on, on TV. It was now televised, and so um, came across, and all of a sudden my name popped up underneath Bud Selig, and, uh, and you know, he gave the announcement, the Mets select Brandon Nimmo with the 13th overall pick in the 2011 draft, and uh, just like I won the biggest game of my life. I just jumped up, and we started jumping around and, and hugging, and uh, – you know, there was mom started crying, and it was it was just really, really really good. Yeah, it was a really good moment, and uh, and then it really really sunk in that now it was the start of my career, and uh, you know started something that I I wanted to do since I was since I could remember, and so uh, it was a very very special moment for us, and uh, probably 30 minutes later we get a call from the Mets, and they're all in their war room, and they all give us a call and say, you know selected you if you haven't heard already and I yeah yeah I, I watched it <laughs> and uh and they said just welcome to the family and we're excited so uh yeah it was it was an amazing moment for me turns it into a lucky number 13 yeah with your draft spot. Yeah, that's, that's great. right that's right so then you get started you go down to your first spring training I'm sure things have changed a lot between Mookie your first spring training and Brandon yours what was spring training like for you back then Mook when you when you finally got started very different. I, I tell you that. Um, we played a, a Huggis thing afield, which is in St. Pete. It was 
uh, that's where the major league club played, but we played at another. The minor league is worked out across town, which was at um, Joan Payson Complex that had in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, it was good. You know, the baseball was great. Um, the thing that bothered me the most of was the toughest was um, the, the travel in spring training um, and the lunch between the workout and the game. You know, we had bean soup and salad, and that was it. <laughs> Bean soup does not sound very conducive no, no, to like no, the Florida no, heat no. and athletics stuff. No, no, it, it was uh, it was tough, and to see the competition, um, I think so many guys, and you know, you think you know, we, you go to towns and you, let's face it, guys, and you go to college, you know, and you think you you think you're pretty hot stuff. All right, all right, and you, you really do until you see some of these other guys, and you see guys that are like six two, you know. You know, 200 pounds, and I'm I'm 140, 41 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> yeah, it was a little scary, but you know, it um, the competition in spring training really brings it out for you, uh, and y you have to have an appreciation for the game when you see some of these people play, man. You know, and that's it's it's humbling. I tell you, I would tell you that. Mm -hmm. What what sounds the same to your experience, Brandon, and what sounds different? Hopefully, better fruit options than <laughs> bean yeah. soup. Yeah, I mean, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> uh, about that. that was it. That we, was yeah, it. we had a peanut butter and jelly for lunch every day. Uh, that's what I lived on and ate all through the minor leagues. Um, and so, yeah, similar, similar in that aspect. Uh, but I would say very similar in the aspect of the talent. That it really jumps out at you um, because you're used to being top dog, like Mookie said, and uh, you come into a place where you're a small fish in a big pond yeah. and. Uh, you know, it, it, it really jumps out to you quick, and I learned, had to learn how to, how to learn how to deal with struggle really quick. Um, a lot more failure than I was used to. And, um, you know, seeing 90, you know, 2, 93 <laughs> on a regular basis from every single guy every single time you came out there was a big adjustment for me. And uh, I was used to seeing that like once a week maybe, you know, like one guy throwing 89, 90. And then every guy they're pumping out is is like that. And so it was a real humbling experience, just like Mookie said. Um, we had we had a little bit, I'm sure, you know, in St. Lucie, we have a good setup there. And so, um, you know, we had a good good little setup with the fields and all that. But playing at noon every day in front of nobody. Oh, yeah. And you have to totally motivate yourself. And it really tests, you know, how much you're willing to give for the game and how much you're willing to – to sacrifice and how much you're willing to work and um, so it's a good first test no doubt um, but you sure learn a lot I mean you know you're out there for three hours before you play practicing learning learning the signs learning you know the guys that you're going to be around the managers everybody's trying to get you know I I everything that they can into you before you go off for the season and so a um, lot of learning going on and uh, sometimes it just feels like your head's going to explode because you're like I didn't know baseball had this much in it but um, you know it's it's a really good learning experience and then from there you guys take it to the next step you go to the minors you start that progression toward the big show Mookie, you, your first minor league stop was Wausau, Wisconsin? Wausau, Wisconsin. Where is Wausau, Wisconsin? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like, like 1977 in Wausau, Wisconsin? What do you do for fun? Where are you living? There like is no fun in Wausau, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> there is no fun. Um, Wausau, Wisconsin. I didn't know it was a place that cold on earth, I'll be honest with you. Um, I was lucky I only played there for um, the end of the season um, because I, went, I didn't sign until late. You know, after the college first year, I didn't sign until late. So I only spent like a month and a half there. Um, but, man, I, I tell you, the ballparks are different now. And I think that scared me. When I walked into Warsaw, the, the clubhouse, and um, I wanted to go home. <laughs> it, was, it was that bad. I was that disappointed. I mean, all you hear about – you look on television, all you see is baseball. You see these pro players, and they give little glimpses of the clubhouses. I thought that's what I was walking into. <laughs> all right? I didn't know I was walking into a shower with a board floor, <laughs> no drain, you know, and that type of stuff. And I'm not exaggerating, folks. This is, this is true. Um, bus rides, guys sleeping on – where the luggage supposed to go? I slept up there. When you're 141 pounds soaking wet, you're the guy I that can goes do up that. In the, everybody in else that falls through. Right. You know, uh, so you know, 
I was so disappointed, my friend, and I, no lie, I was really, really disappointed because I thought pro ball was supposed to be an upgrade from the university. University, we had buses, man, leather seats, man, even, even flew a couple of places. Yeah. When you go to Warsaw, Wisconsin, you don't fly there, baby. No. <laughs> what, was your, what was your longest bus ride in those days? I don't know. After the first four hours, I went to sleep. So, I, you know, we were, I mean, we were all over between Wisconsin and, and, you know, in Iowa and God knows where else. <laughs> You know, but they were all the same place. One place is just like Quad City. Anybody been to Quad Cities? Don't go. Anybody been to Quad Cities? Anybody no. know where that is? Quad Cities? Anybody know where that is? Appleton? Clinton, Iowa? See, these people don't even know where it is. <laughs> this, is Sorry. this is Mets Geography <laughs> with Mookie Wilson. This is great. We're learning so nah, much about but that, it. But it was rough. But um, I was glad. I was happy I only spent uh, a month and a half there. You end up making it to New York, so you got to the pro yeah. experience that you dreamed about for yeah. so long. Brandon, you got to New York technically a lot faster. Your second minor league year, you end up in Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn. Shout out, Brooklyn. <laughs> right. now, talking about, you know, Mookie coming from a small town. You come from Wyoming. Yeah. We got Wyoming in the house? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The population of the entire state of Wyoming, I looked this up today, yeah. 577,000 people. Yeah. The population of just Brooklyn, yeah. 2.5 million people. Yep. <laughs> so what's it like for you growing up in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and your second year of pro ball, you end up in Brooklyn, New York City. What's, what's that like? It was a culture shock. <laughs> yeah. I, I, had, I had no clue what I had gotten myself into. <laughs> I uh, was wondering where all the trees were. I was <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, I was so used to being able to see for 40 miles, and now I can only see for 40 feet. And I was like, what in the world did I, bars on the windows, bars on the doors. I was, I was like, man, where did I, where did I go? This is, this is still the U.S. Like, you know, like, I can't believe it. So, huge culture shock. Um, had to learn, I, it was either get on a 15 passenger van with 20 people, and <laughs> <laughs> just sit on top of each other or take the subway. So I had to learn how to take the subway. And uh, that was a totally new experience for me. I had never taken public transportation. So They don't have a metro system? No, back no in, metro back system Cheyenne. back in Cheyenne. Uh, so I just I had a lot of new experiences to learn from. I remember I remember after the game thinking, where the heck is an olive garden? Like where is a <laughs> where is a Texas roadhouse or something around here? And I had no clue all the good food that was sitting underneath my nose, but yeah. just didn't have a brand name on it. Yeah. And uh, I, I just look back on that year, and I'm like, I missed out on so much by just because I was, I was just in a totally new place, and I had no clue what I had just gotten into. So I was looking for Olive Gardens, I was looking for all that stuff, and I never found it. But I, uh, you know, I really did learn uh, a lot of great things for when I did come back to New York in uh, in 2016 and uh, again the Brooklyn fans are amazing and they really supported me and I struggled big time early on and I just remember getting support from them and you know it was it was really it was really big for me being just like 19 years old coming out um, being alone for the first times and and being in a totally new place to get that kind of support. And I really turned things around at the end. And, uh, and, it, and it was a great finish to the year. But um, I did learn a whole lot that really helped it. When I came back to, to New York in 2016, I was like, ah, all right, I've been here before. I kind of know how this goes. And I, was, I finally started to take advantage of the good food in New York. If you guys have any Italian restaurant recommendations, give them to Brandon on the yeah, way out. We no can do question. better than Olive Garden. No question. Yeah. No, I've been – it's it's amazing. I, I've been all <laughs> over now. I love it. I, I'm sure part of it, Brandon, in getting acclimated and the support of the fans and everything, another thing that's changed a lot from your day, Mookie, yeah. social media yeah. Which yeah. didn't exist back then. No. You've got a pretty good following. You've got like 30,000 or six, no, 60,000, right, on Twitter and on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. something right around there. What's uh, – he says, like, what a humble brag there. <laughs> What, what, how do you use it to stay in touch with fans or family? Like, to you, what is social media? How do you use it? Yeah, I think it's just a bridge for us. Uh, a lot of people look at us with this uniform on and think that we're like, you know, I mean, the kids look and think that you're superheroes or whatnot. But uh, we're just normal people who, you know, came from, like, I came from Cheyenne, Wyoming, you know, and, and you came from South Carolina, and we came from, you came from a town of 500 people, and 
I came in from a town of 50,000 oh, people. And the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we, we come from humble roots, and, and we worked really hard at what we were given. We were given some God-given abilities and, and got to this point and some open doors. But it's kind of just that bridge to be like, hey, we're normal people, too, who – who made it to this position. So maybe to, to humanize us a little bit, you know, and, uh, and just kind of give us that connection with, uh, with, with the fan base a little bit better. So, um, that's how I try to use it. Uh, you know, it's my, it's my little platform and, uh, and I like to, I like to welcome people into it and just let them see a little glimpse of what, what do I get to do as a, as a big league baseball player, but not just, not just the baseball, but the behind the scenes of, you know, kind of where we're going in New York and what we get to do. And um, it's, just a, it's just a little way to humanize us. Yep. Mookie, how happy were you that social media did not exist for the 1986 team? <laughs> do I have to answer that? <laughs> I, I think that is the answer. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, go for it. Let's see what Mookie yeah. has to say. Says it all. Says it all. It's a double. No, it sword. was it was a great, great year, 1986. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Great year. Uh, my, I, I tell you what, I played on a lot of lot of teams, and to a man, this was the greatest team I've ever played on. You know, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Um, you know, there's a lot been said about that team that I know people read all kinds of books about the bad guys, one, and just that and the other. Yeah, you, you know, don't believe everything you read, some of it, but don't believe everything you read. Uh, you know, social media probably would have destroyed that, that club. It's, it's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Um, those guys, they came to the ballpark, they played hard, man. That's one thing which never was in question. What they did after the game was another story. <laughs> uh, I, but, but they did normal things. They did normal things. They went and had a beer. Everybody has a beer. They don't always fight cops, but they have a beer. <laughs> you know. I mean, <laughs> so they were no different. I, I, I'm like Brandon. I think that they look at ball players as being superhuman and, and, and not being able to indulge and make those same mistakes. Some mistakes that we made in 86, you guys made the same mistakes. Nobody wrote a book about you, but you made the same <laughs> mistakes. You know? So, yeah, but, but social media was, a, you know, as good as it is, it has its place. I'm not one for it, you know, but... Um, I was going to say, I looked up your Twitter today. You have not tweeted no. since August of 2015. Right. <laughs> Mookie, you're giving he us tried. no content. Well, I, I only got the Twitter account because, you, you know, I, I, I wrote a book, and the publisher says you got to get a Twitter account or a Facebook account. We'll take care of it. You just got to get one. I said, hang with them. You know, there you go. I, don't there do, it is. I don't deal with it, no. <laughs> All right, guys, we've got about five minutes left. Yeah. Get uh, your questions ready. We're going to have some questions. The microphones are floating around while we wait for some questions to get set. Last one for you guys. How has your scouting and prep changed? Because, like, nowadays you've got so many stats and video and everything, Brandon and Mookie. I mean, you guys, I'm sure, had a lot less, a lot more eye tests. How has that evolved from what you guys talk to each other well, about? Well, scouting has evolved a lot. Um, you know, I, I was around when we first signed Brandon, and I saw him his first game, actually. And um, I say, this kid ain't going to make it. You know, <laughs> but no, what happens is, you know, scouting was about potential. We look at the, the, the nat athletic ability of players. Because, God, look, drafting players are crapshoot, guys. Don't let anybody for you. It's a crapshoot. And, you know, you look at the ability and say, well, if he grows into his body, we, hey, we got something here that's going to be really good. He hustled, which is always a plus. I don't know if that even has a stat for that now. I don't know if analytics has a stat for that anymore. There's a stat for everything yeah, yeah. now. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know, you know. But it, it's different now. It was more the eye test. It was more the eye test, and now it's more it's just a number that's assigned to every thing or every aspect of the game, and, and that is how the scouting really is done now. So it's, it's really, really, really different. I don't know if it's easier. I don't know if it's better. But it's there, so we have to deal with it. Real quick, because we've got to get to the fans, Brandon. Do you like all the information you have access to, or can it be a little too much sometimes? you you got to filter through it, um, but it, it's really good information to have. If you're not using it, you're behind the ball. So, um, 
you do have to use it. You do, but there is such a thing as too much information. And um, sometimes when you're feeling good, uh, the least amount of information that can come in is, is better. But um, don't get me wrong, you know, if you're not feeling right, it's really good to get into the video room. Um, there's also little things that you can pick up now in the game that, you know, are were, are, are a lot easier, I think, now than they were then on, like, um, you know, on, like, guys – getting into rhythms and them showing yeah showing them their tendencies so um it's it's very very useful you just have to be diligent with okay i'm gonna let this i'm gonna take this i'm gonna use this i'm gonna leave that all right well said let's get to you guys name where you're from and what your question is who it's for cool my name is jordan from new york uh question for brandon so you mentioned you're from wyoming one of the few states that doesn't offer high school baseball. So could you give us a little bit of that insight of what it was like seeking baseball opportunities from a young age up until the draft? Yeah, so um, a lot of people think that I didn't play high school baseball, and so they just saw me throwing like an ice fishing pole and thought I had good hands. <laughs> and so I, it didn't, it's not, that's not exactly how it worked out. I did have American Legion baseball, yeah. um, and I played 80 games a year, um, which normally in high school you're playing 30, and then summer ball they're playing 50, unless you're down like Florida or Southern in California where you play all year round and to be quite honest I'm glad I didn't grow up there because I played other sports and I'm really big proponent of playing other sports and learning you know I, I learned a lot of other things from the sports so um, I still played American Legion I've played 80 games a year from middle of April until about August like middle of August um, and we tried to travel around as much as we could I had a real I had the last group of Wyoming Cowboy baseball players because they got rid of baseball with title nine and we had that last group that was the sons of that and I got fortunate to be in that group and uh, they knew baseball really really well and they taught it to us and we had a feeder going into American Legion we traveled all around the country and to just found good baseball to go play in and so it really helped me to get exposed and uh, and to let the scouts see me one down here hi my name is Joseph from Brooklyn um what was it like hitting your first major league home run? Go ahead. I think that goes for both of you. Mookie, you remember your first major league home run? What was it like hitting my first major league home run? Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hit enough of them. I, you know, I, I, I do not remember hitting my first. I honestly do not remember. No, let me change that. Yeah, yes, I do remember hitting it. It's just um, I hit it, uh, I think, it was all for um, – I hit it in Philadelphia. I hit it left-handed. Uh, I hit it in Philadelphia. Um, I forget the pitcher's name, but I, I think. But it really didn't make a difference to me. I, you know, hit's a hit to me. Yeah. My, mine mattered a little bit to me, but it was. <laughs> it was. Uh, I think it was Jason Hamels, and I and I think. I remember that because I watched him play for Colorado, okay. and uh, and then to hit a home run off of him, I was like, oh wow. I can't believe I just hit a home run off a guy that I watched uh, growing up. And so, um, so yeah, mine was amazing. I hit the ball, I remember, just like like you want it to feel where you don't feel anything. And I just felt to go through, and I was like, oh, man, I don't know. I've never hit one before, <laughs> so I'm just going to sprint. And, I'm, and, I'm, and then that became a thing. Uh, but <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to sprint. I don't know if it's going over. And... It went over, and I just remember, I don't even remember touching the bases after that. It was just, like, floating around, hair on the back of my neck stood up. I couldn't believe it. My family was there to see it. And it was just like I couldn't, have, I couldn't have drawn it up any better. Hey, keep hitting them. Keep sprinting. Yeah, thank you. We Appreciate like that. <laughs> we have time for one more, and we're going to go over here to the side. Last question. Hi, Mookie. Hi, Brandon. This Hi. is for Brandon. I'm Liz from Milford, Pennsylvania. My daughter and I drove over two hours to be here today. Thank, Thank you, you for Liz. taking your time out. And it was a real goalie washer out there. Yeah, it's a real <laughs> goalie washer. I like that. <laughs> but, Brandon, you're so, so diverse, and you seem like you, you do anything that the manager tells you to do. If you had one position that he said, all right, Brandon, what do you want to do today? What would it be out of the nine? Center field. I'd, I'd want to play center field, and that would be, that'd be good for me. <laughs> Well, we're looking forward to seeing wherever you play this year. It's going to be you. a great 2020 season. Guys, one more time, give it up for Mookie Wilson, Brandon Nimmo. All right.